My grandma had a recurring dream throughout her life, beginning at age four or so. And apparently she had the dream right up until she went into the last two weeks of her life. She's walking down a gravel road. There's nothing around her. Sometimes the sky would be a brilliant sunset. Sometimes just heavy shades of gray. Occasionally there was a massive dilapidated barn way in the distance. But usually it was just her walking this road. She recognised that she was the same age as in Waking Life, every time she had it. But what unnerved her is she was never in colour. She would be sad that a coat she loved at 20 was only grey in the dreams, for example. I'm the oldest grandkid, and I'm the only one of the seven of us who spend the night, lived with my grandparents, and visited all the time. The first time I had the dream, I was 11. It was all monochrome, and my grandma was only a couple steps ahead. I wanted to call it out, but I knew I couldn't. I woke up in tears. I was spending the night at my grandparents' house, and I told my grandma the story. She was always very private. A suppressed woman who, sadly, was so insecure, she worried what everyone thought. So she dismissed my fears. It wasn't until my early twenties, we happened to have a quiet afternoon together, and she shared how she'd had these dreams her entire life. I was a bit angry and annoyed. I asked her why she never believed me, and she said it scared her. My grandma passed in 2019, and I wasn't there for many reasons. Although we had a very tense, soft and strained relationship, now that I'm almost 50, I easily see how fiercely she loved me, the best she could. My grandma was an absolutely amazing woman, but it breaks my heart she couldn't be more for herself. Neither of us could figure out these semi-connected dreams we were having, and most of the time, one of us would have it the day or two before the other. We never shared this with anyone. She didn't want to think to people we were lying or weird. I've only had it once around her birthday, the April after she passed. I was a big walker, and the few days in August before the dream, I was inundated by monarch butterflies on my walk. I've lived in the Adirondacks for a while, and I've never seen that many monarchs in August. The dreams are uncomfortable and scary. Only because my grandma was filled with great fear. She was a devoted Roman Catholic and very scared of everything she didn't understand. I, on the other hand, began experiencing and sensing paranormal and otherworldly stuff when I was six. For me, the oddness was a way to feel a connection to my grandma. I desperately wanted for her to love me, but in a way, the dream allowed me to validate her fears and to give her safe space to regroup. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Let me say first, I'm not terribly fanciful. Neither is my dad, who works as a CFO for a public company. When my siblings and I were little, we all thought we saw a ghost in my sister's room after recently moving into the house. We were all younger than seven at the time. My sister always felt ill at ease in the room. To the point she cried whenever my parents made her sleep in her own room for many years. She practically remembers one time where she was sleeping and then someone, who she thought was my dad, carrying her downstairs and putting her in the living room armchair. She specifically remembers that she kind of woke up and was angry that my dad brought her downstairs. She was woken up in the chair the next morning by my dad, who asked why she was sleeping downstairs and said he never brought her downstairs. As far as ghost origin, the house is old, so there could be stories we don't know. We know there was a Native American tribe in the area, and we know the house used to be an orchid. We also know in the 70s, a resident of the house left angrily after a fight, zoomed his car down the driveway, went over the curb and hit and killed a young boy across the street who was playing with one of those pop-pop fake lawnmowers. We also know the house was built in the 1870s and when my parents renovated the upstairs bathroom, they found a letter that was sent to the local church nailed inside the wall. The event that happened yesterday, my mom and dad were home and my dad was in the attic. He went down to the second floor and into my parents' room when he saw a movement move one of the other side of the room that leads to the hallway of my sister's room. 
It was a figure in what he thought was my mom's pajamas, going from my sister's room area to my brother's room in the bathroom, right in that hallway. He called my mom's name, nothing. So he went and checked out the hallway, then heard my mom downstairs. He didn't see anything in any of the rooms. He went downstairs and my mom said he looked visibly spooked. The scariest part of the story for me is that it happened to my dad, who was not one for striking fancies. And he swears he saw something move, wearing some sort of pattern, move across in his line of vision. He got LASIK eye surgery a few years ago, so he has good vision. Kind of creepy. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I've been bothered by this for a while. I've had it happen twice where I get three knocks on the door. The first time, I was in my bedroom. No one was home. The dog was in the room with me and started barking. I said, come in. No one came in. I got up and searched the entire house and no one was there. I moved to a new place up the street a few years later. The second time that happened to me, I was sitting at the table with a friend in a different house than before. At the time, I had a TV screen connected to a camera to where I could see my front door and a good amount of area in front of it. That was just before all these modern motion detection cameras. It wasn't the best neighborhood. We were sitting there and we hear three loud knocks really fast. It sounded like somebody hitting a door with a baseball bat but somewhat fast three times. There was no one there. All of a sudden, the baseball bat that I kept by my door flew across the room and rolled to a stop. It was a fairly large room too, so it flew maybe 10 feet. Right after a pelican, I had fallen off the shelf. This wasn't the only occurrence I had. I also heard running across the roof multiple times. I had a box sitting at the top of the stairs. I heard a strange shuffling noise in the box, spilled down the stairs and crashed to the bottom. No one was up there and no lights were on. My dog will cry for no reason in a very strange way. And also one of my doors seemingly opened on its own. Long scratching on the interior walls that didn't sound like a mouse scratching motion. For me, I just want to know if anybody's ever heard the three knocks and what it means. It still bothers me. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. My childhood was filled with a lot of abuse, starting with my dad. That being said, when my mom was doing okay before she became a mean alcoholic, she was sensitive. So was her mom and her mom's mom. My dad would always scream or be violent with me for my ghost stories. He started to believe me after things started to amp up when I was nine in the Alexander Graham Bell house. I freaked out the poor tour guide. My dad, my adult half-sister, her husband, my mom and I were touring the house in Texas. I didn't know that Alexander Graham Bell had tried to remove a bullet out of a president. Nine-year-old me froze and I don't remember saying it because all I knew was I saw two old dudes in my head. One trying to remove a bullet and the other old dude dying. I didn't know he was a president. I guess I said, someone died in this room. They were shot. There was an awkward pause while my brain was transported back into this place. The tour guide awkwardly laughed and said, I guess she's read up on her history. I don't remember anything else really from the house, except that, and although my dad died when I was 13, my mom remembered this for years until the alcoholism got too bad. My sister still does. Fast forward to when I was 11. My mom and I were on a trip without my dad. We ended up going to the museum where JFK was shot. I was drawn to a window and fainted after being overwhelmed with hate. Apparently, the window was the window he was shot out of. She didn't tell my dad because he had believed me at that point but wanted to take me to our rabbi because it had gotten so obvious that he thought I was playing with dark forces. In reality, I just couldn't control them. This was my last straw. After he died, his spirit passed. I think it lingered for a few days to say goodbye, but although he had so much anger, it passed with him. 
I was pleasantly surprised. I've had no issue with the spirit. However, my mom encouraged me to use my gift. I no longer see it as a gift. Because once I was 15, when she had started to get bad, and I had fully opened up myself to my abilities, I couldn't focus on her house in certain places. It was too loud and too dark. I got freakish visions of future and past events. It became too much when I was in the car with my mom and we drove by a car accident. I saw a vision of the bloody scene close up and started hyperventilating. Later, on the news, my vision was confirmed to me and my mom. I started to use headphones and blast music constantly. I tuned out the world because I saw too much of it. Now, I don't get these visions. I am still sensitive and can feel that bad places are bad and have a vague idea of why. But I almost want to use this gift again. I don't know why, but I feel like it's something I'm meant to do. This being said, how do I open fully to my abilities again while controlling them? My issue in the past was being unable to control them. They were too strong. When looking at rentals, I chose a house with a neutral energy. There are no spirits here. I know I have a safe house this way. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I was four years old. I've experienced paranormal my entire life. Sightings, dreams, and premonitions. This was one of my first experiences that I have memory of. We lived in a cedar-sided split foyer home on top of a mountain. I had a younger brother by ten and a half months. We shared a bedroom across the hall from my parents' room. We would see this figure constantly. We saw it so much that we started to just ignore it. It stood about three or four feet tall, had an outline like a teddy bear that wore a classic Viking helmet with horns. We never could see its features, just the dark shadow. Our older cousins by one or two years spent one night. Everyone was in a circle with our sleeping bags on the floor of our room. The lights were still on. My cousin immediately whispered what it was and he pointed at the creature who was standing in our doorway watching us. I told him it was just our monster and he watches us play. He can't do anything to us or hurt us and I stuck my tongue out at it to assure my cousin the thing was harmless. My mom told us monsters couldn't get us, so I was extra brave around it. A few nights later, I woke up in the middle of the night. I slept on the top bunk and my brother on the bottom. I see the creature climbing up the bunk bed ladder to my bed. To this day, I have no idea why or how I was brave enough to do this, but I moved the ladder and sat in front of it, blocking the creature from coming up. It stopped climbing, but we were inches from each other's faces. It seemed like we sat like that forever, because I remember thinking, what the heck is this? And why can't I see its actual face? I reached out and tapped its shoulder. All then, hell broke loose. As soon as I touched it, I couldn't see all of it. The entire body was covered in monster heads. Its main face had giant big eyes and sharp, sharp teeth. It terrified me and confused me and seemed to be an intense pain from my touch. It grabbed me by the back and tore my back up. It screamed in my face. Of course, I'm screaming hysterically and I break free and crawl to the far end of my bed and stop praying and stop screaming. By this time, my mom ran in and all I could say was, Monster. The next morning, my mom casually made me come into the kitchen to show her best friend my back. As an adult, my mom told me she was so scared and that my back was all scratched up. Scratches I didn't have that night at bedtime. I asked my cousin about what he saw that night. He still admitted to it 30 plus years later and told me when I stuck my tongue out, he was terrified. As an adult, my brother described the same exact appearance of it after having a similar encounter shortly after mine. He passed it on our basement stairs and screamed at it. After my encounter, I never saw it again. 
My son, who is three, is terrified of shadows, and he knows the difference between normal shadows and tells me one walks around his room. Is it the same thing? What the hell is it? You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. We have lived in our house for a while. It was a new construction. They started developing down the road, and I had heard there was a small cemetery on the edge of the area. They're developing, and we have another old family cemetery up the main road. After they started developing, we started having weird things happen, like stuff just falling off of tables. I went to check on the baby and saw his hanging toy moving and reflecting in the play mirror, but he wasn't in the crib. Then I saw him in his little chair, my husband had put him in instead. I was so freaked out when I saw this, and there was no air blowing there. Then I mentioned a dream to my husband. My husband and I also had a weird dream, but didn't realise it till the next week, so it may have been the same night. I dreamed something was running down the hall towards me with fangs and claws, but couldn't remember anything else besides the eyes. It went to attack me, but I woke up. My husband dreamed some animal attacked him coming down the same hall, but he didn't wake up before getting ripped apart. I do have sleep paralysis that has picked back up for a while. Online, I found there were three graves by the construction, but I've gone to look, but they left these small clusters of trees where they should be, so I think they left them alone. We lost our senior doc after this and keep seeing a shadow out of the corner of our eyes and hearing him sort of thing. So I don't think that's related. The baby stares and laughs at places where there's nothing, but I'm just telling myself that's a normal baby thing. I'm too scared to talk about this stuff while home and too scared to use any apps. I'm not sure what to do. Nothing's happened for a couple of days. Could it be related to the construction? Because the timing is spot on. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. It's been below freezing for a while now. We stopped letting our mouse throw up because of it, but it seems like something, whatever it is, realised her pattern of behaviour by letting her inside, and it won't leave us alone. I thought my roommate's dad was messing with us when we got back in from college for winter break, but he explained how he even walked outside to see what it was. If you've ever been around stray cats, especially those that need help, they always stay within sight of you. Whatever this thing is, it ran around the side of the house as he went outside and kept meowing, low and long, leading him to the old goat pen near the wood line. He never once saw it, despite the fact that it triggered the motion lights around the house. I haven't seen or heard it until tonight, which is why I'm typing this out. I have two large windows in my room and I keep the blinds cracked a little for sun to come through for my plants. I've been sitting at my desk attempting to do prep for this upcoming semester, and I've had many swivel chair faced away from the window, so I can keep an eye on my laptop as it plays a video of background noise. I heard it in between the talking of the video, the meowing. It was low and distorted, not like any cat I've ever heard, and it made my blood run cold. My window is a good nine feet off the ground as we live on a hill. Whatever this thing was had its face against the glass or something because it sounded like it came from right behind me. I didn't look. I did manage to clear the entirety of my entire room in two massive leaps though. Right after this happened, my roommate came out of her room and said that something was whimpering outside her window. Like a dog upset that it's not getting what it wants from its owner. She's currently gathering eggshells and told her railroad spikes as I type this out. Her father is going to look for her this trial cram when the sun comes up. Any advice would be appreciated. Everywhere we've looked online or asked for advice from at this point has basically resulted in sucks to suck. Don't go outside. If there are any non-paranormal explanations for this, that would be great too. Because we won't know for sure until we get the trail camera up. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. In March 2019, 
I was come to not too far from a small town in Mexico called Catavina, where long spindly plants reach toward the sky. The landscape is covered in granite boulders and cactus easily reach 20 foot high. I camped at a place where I had no cell phone reception for two weeks. During these two weeks, I didn't speak or see a single person. These days I could explore the area and listen to podcasts. I parked my van on this sandy grassy area, which had a not often used fire pit and the biggest cactus I had ever seen, which looked like a hand with many fingers. At the time I had been living in the van for five or so months and had covered all the windows with reflective material to keep down the heat during the day. One night while I was in the van, I heard some padding around the van. In my mind, I imagined something with paws because of the padding sound it made around my van. My heart beat fast at the realization that something was outside my van. My doors were locked. I laid in my bed and listened to the steps around and around my van. After the padding stopped, I opened the door and a light and found nothing. Not even enough tracks to make out in the sand. The strangest part for me is the amount of time it stayed around my van, somewhere in the range of 10 to 30 minutes. After learning about the black dogs and related Mexican counterparts, I started to think about this event. I wonder if whatever it was, was part of this weird. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Me and my family have been seeing some stuff over the years, and to me, it's terrifying. I've only experienced it two times. The first time was when I was like seven, and this was the worst paranormal thing I've witnessed looking back. But I went in the kitchen and looked out the back door, and something laying down like a dog was looking at me, like eye contact. One eye was yellow, the other was green. I tell everyone in the living room something is outside, and when they check, it's literally gone. The second time I saw it was when I was going to get firewood on the stove and as soon as I opened the door, something right there moved extremely fast, causing me to jump back. Other members of the family have experiences too, like my sister who has taken the dog out to use the bathroom. There's an old woodshed that we don't use anymore, but that's where the dog used the restroom and my sister said it looked at me, which was absolutely terrifying. I took the dog out once and it was the same spot. I turn around and look at a big bush. It starts shaking violently. I force the dog to move with me back to the house. My grandfather liked to be in her car while watching stuff and drinking beer. But one time it ran past the front of a car and she couldn't leave. She asked us to go out and there and escort her back. She doesn't do that anymore and it was like her favorite thing to do. Not sure if this is the same thing or if it's related, but another time when I was seven, I woke up and something whispered my name. This scared the absolute shit out of me and I went crying to my older sister. This happened again when I was like 10 and they were both coming back from the back porch where I saw it laying like a dog. Speaking of my older sister, a while ago, she was going up to the house through the back field, which was really high grass at that point. She and her friends stopped because of some rustling somewhere close and something full sprint was going towards them and they ran to the house as quickly as possible. You haven't had much happen recently until a few weeks ago. I was on call with someone with my sister and I was messing around screaming for some reason. Me and my sister hear something scream back. We both look at each other and go inside. We live in the woods and not close to much so that really freaked me out. There at least was a trend around Appalachia. My father was with one of his friends and they were hunting. They saw a skinwalker because the deer they saw ran and hid behind a tree, which kept peeking at them. Eventually it runs off, but in a much smaller. His friend got pictures of its footprints, which could be actual proof, but I can't get the pictures. The place they were was close, but not on our property. One of my biggest fears is one of our dogs coming back from outside. And it's not our dog, and it gets inside. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I have a constant looming feeling that I'm being watched. People think I'm crazy, 
and may not believe in the paranormal, but ever since I was little, I can remember experiencing little things that have progressed over the years. Whoever it is, or what it is, has never harmed me at all, and in fact, is very protective over me. I've always talked to my mom about it, but she just brushed it off, but recently she has been more open to it. She finally budged after one evening while eating dinner. I explained to her that my son has been pointing to the corners of my home, saying he's scared and that there's a ghost. My mother's face drops and tells me I need to get the baby baptised. Confused by this, I ask her why, and she tells me it's to protect the baby from bad things. I insisted on what she meant by that. She then tells me when I was younger, around eight or nine, my best friend and I at the time were staying over at her house. My mom was coming to pick me up and had gone up to Sammy's room where we were hanging out. Horrified to find us playing with a Ouija board, she quickly grabbed me and we left after she had tried to cleanse me from the board. Everything clicked all at once. My childhood pink house, hearing footsteps constantly up and down the basement stairs when I would grab the laundry. The greenhouse where I could hear my name being called or things being moved to places I did not put them. The newly built house has the doorknob. Tired, I was awakened in the middle of the night by my unplugged radio. And as I went and asked my mom for help, I reached for the doorknob and it started to shake violently as if it was locked and someone was trying to open it. Calling out for help, my mom rushes trying to open the door as I scream saying, someone is in the house. My mom searched out of the house just to tell me no one is in the home. Being teased and watching kids tripping over nothing, even when I was working. My manager was teasing me too much and fell face first into the ground after telling me, I hope you trip, and he immediately fell. I can feel someone watching me. It's a feeling I try to ignore, but I can't shake the feeling this all stemmed from this board. I never said goodbye. I never closed the portal. I'm posting this not for any advice, but my sanity. I'm not crazy. I'm not paranoid. I know what I heard and what I've seen. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Every night I come to bed and listen to music, and every time I'm ready to go to sleep, I take out my headphones and plug my phone in. And every night, I hear a voice saying something that's two syllables. Sounds like, thank you. So I assumed it was the neighbor's voice or furniture or something, because I'm in an apartment. But I was thinking one night, that sounded like my name. I just ignore it. But the last couple of times it says it once. Then it says it louder or with inflection. It does sound like it's coming from through the wall or disembodied. I don't know, I could be crazy. And it could be just my neighbor, but it's every single night and always two syllables. Sounds almost like a recording being played because it's the same sound like someone messing with me. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Not overly paranormal, more like unexplainable. Me and my friend back in high school had to escape the mud dumps. We were driving out these mining roads when literally out of the blue, about two or three kilometers back, I could see headlights cresting the hill behind us. Didn't think too much of this, even though it was almost 3 a.m. Anyhow, we went over another hill and when we got to the bottom, the headlight was behind us, which meant in about three to five minutes, the vehicle caught up to us. Getting a little nervous now, because we're doing 30 plus on this old wood road, they must have been traveling at well over what I originally thought. So I decided they're rushing, pulling over in the next side trail. Went around a corner, found a side trail and backed into it. For the sake of, I don't know why, we decided to hide and turn off the lights. We sat there for about five minutes, questioning where this car went. We waited a bit longer. We decided they must have taken another road that we didn't see. I was just about to turn the lights back on and looked in the mirror to see two red tail lights about 50 feet behind. I pointed them out to my friend. Her face went white. We rushed out and started the way we came from. I looked back and nothing. 
The road was clear forward and back. As we crested hills again, we noticed the same headlights behind us, but this time it always kept its distance on the previous hill. After about 20 minutes of driving, I got to the top of a hill and stopped. The headlights on the previous hill did too. We were about five minutes to the main road at this point, so we just pieced out. We got to the bottom of the hill. The headlights were on the top of the hill we were just on and catching us fast. Did about 50 to 70 plus on a dirt road. Followed us for a solid three or four minutes, about 100 to 200 feet back. As soon as we hit the main road, the lights vanished. I know a little bit about cars, but I'll never forget those perfectly round headlights. And narrow straight up and down tail lights. Definitely a strange situation for us. Been back a few times, never after dark though. I stick to daylight driving now. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Greece, summer 2008. I'm 16 years old. My father rented me a room so I could find some peace in a luxury club near Athens. One night, I hear a woman screaming in anger, knocking on the wall near my bed. I'm going to knock at the door. They won't let me in. Then I go back to my room again. Silence. Good, I'm going back to bed. The very next day, I got up quite early, and as the day went by, it was good. But at nightfall, the same story happens again. This time, I responded by hitting on the wall. In my bedroom's balcony, I go out and try to see what is happening on the other side, but the light is off. I wonder if it's not a couple making fierce love, but there's no doubt. What I hear at that moment are clearly annoyed, angry cries. I'm going to knock again. No one answers me. I go to the reception to finally complain about the noise, although I don't like it. Maybe it could be a woman who has been abused by a violent husband. But the staff tells me that the room next to mine is free and therefore totally empty. I'm going back to bed. The story gives me chills. Eventually, a couple moves into the cursed bedroom. I'm rather reassured, but it doesn't last. When I go to the swimming pool, I see them at the reception complaining that their bathroom is disgusting and the room is very noisy, which is surprising because I didn't hear anything weird. I'm starting to have nightmares. I dream of a woman hanging in a laundromat. The image disturbs me a lot. The staff probably offered another room to the couple who left. I even heard some knock-knock sounds on the wall. When I secretly smoked on the balcony, the light turned on by itself. I also asked to change rooms. This time, it was in a building faced to the one where I slept for a few nights. I was really obsessed with this cursed room. One night, the person who now occupied the room waved to me, but I was in the dark. Maybe he or she was waving at someone else, but the screaming came back. The club had closed, and I've never experienced a similar situation again. This is all pure coincidence. There must be an explanation. Maybe there was a living person who secretly lived in the room this whole time. Dead or alive, it doesn't seem okay. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. My fiancé and I live in a large industrial area, building in Marcel, eastern France, on the border of Luxembourg and Germany. It's a relatively peaceful area, but there are quite conservative people. Since we're two men in love, we're careful to remain discreet to avoid unnecessary problems. We live in a high tower, about 20 floors in an old flat. The few discussions we have are with people at the supermarket cashiers or small talks with the neighbours. Shortly after we moved into the building, we met an old gentleman, always on his bicycle. White hair, white teeth, sunglasses. At first we kind of appreciated him, as he was funny, enjoying life, ready to go on his little bike. I thought he was a widower, so it was important to us to take care of elderly people to fight his possible solitude. One evening, we told him about the serious illness of our cat, which saddens us. The old man replied, smiling, Oh well, you know, I had a cat before. And then one day, I noticed that he was getting more and more lazy. I hadn't noticed he was already dead, rotting for several days. But it started to sink a lot. So, I threw him in the trash rooms of the building over there. 
I was so shocked by his lack of tact and empathy that I had a nervous laugh which he interpreted as a way of laughing at what he had just ranted. I started avoiding him, but we were incredibly lucky to always meet him. Recently, I had to stand him in the elevator all alone. When a woman arrived in the hall, he noticed her. Once we're out of sight, he said to me, she mustn't go to the basement of the building, otherwise I might wait for her. I replied, there are cameras everywhere. Also, I told him to be careful, but he laughed again as usual. When I see this guy through the living room window, coming back with his bike, it's a disturbing vibe. I feel something is definitely wrong with him. Since then, every time we meet, I can't help but think about one thing. Escaping. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. One night, I went to an event from my dad's with a friend. He was gay and had a boyfriend, but agreed to be my chaperone. And when the night was ending at about midnight, and we said our goodbyes, he said, he told me, Oh, my boyfriend asked me to tell you to message him when you reach home. Mind you, we didn't have smartphones or mobile internet at the time. So when I reached home, I connected and sent my friend's boyfriend a message. Let's call him Cal. So I messaged Cal and said, Hey, Mike told me you wanted to speak to me. I had only ever talked with Cal on the internet. We hadn't met in person yet. Oh yeah, I dreamt about you, he told me, and then proceeded to narrate his dream to me. I'll try my best to tell you what Cal's dream was about, but I've probably forgotten some details. It was a day in the afternoon. I was there when I met a child. This child was apparently lost. He was wearing old clothes and took my finger and started walking with me. I followed him and arrived at a house where there was a red sweater hanging like it had been left to dry in the sun. What was weird was at that time I was at my rebellious phase and wore only black. I didn't own any coloured clothes. But since I had this event, I mentioned at the beginning I was wearing at the same moment a red sweater. I went inside the house. The kids started to show me around. We arrived at a room that was kind of weird. It was like it was made of mirrors. My parents' room had two huge wardrobes and the doors were made of mirrors. Again, I didn't know Cal in person and he had never been in my house. But for some reason, I started to get really nervous by that point. Like everything felt heavier by the minute. Then we went into another room, which was also weird because the windows are really close to the floor. Like huge windows. He mentioned that he saw in the dream that the windows were close to the floor because they were actually very close to the bed. Again, it wasn't exactly the case, but my bed was really tall and was really close to the window in height, like eight inches difference. And what he was saying to me described the house I lived in that moment again, my parents' house. Honestly, I was terrified at this point. The kid told me this was his house, that he lived there. He told me he loves your family, but he loves you specially because you play with him every night. At this point, he had told me the name of the kid, to this day, I don't say the name out loud, because when I used to do it, he appeared and the room would feel heavy. What's important is that the name he told me was the name of an online character I had at the time, a character I would play with every night. This is important because my friend Mike didn't know about this. He knew about everything else. He saw me use the red sweater that day and he had been to my parents' house, but he didn't know about the online game. So the kid loves you and told me that he sits at the window and watches you sleep. I picked up the phone at that moment and called Mike to scream at him. I had been chatting with Cal for about an hour or so, but I didn't care and started asking Mike if he had told Cal anything about how my parents looked like or what I was wearing that day. But he simply said like, why would I do that? And since we were young, I mean, it makes sense. You tell people if a friend has a pool or really cool stuff, but you don't describe so many details about their parents' bedroom. I guess I just believed Mike and was terrified. He called Mike Calvo and asked him to stop scaring me, but I wasn't able to get any sleep until it was sunny again. Another important detail was that Cal swears to me that the child left a mark on his finger. Remember I said the child took his finger to drag him to the house? Well, when we finally met in person, not long after, he showed me the mark. It was small and round and dark, but not black, like a birthmark. I asked Mike to tell me had the mark before when they met, but Mike assured me the mark was new. 
and Cal insisted it appeared on his finger after the dream. Also, I'm still friends with Mike and Cal. It wasn't a birthmark. The mark went away from Cal's finger. I don't know when, because we didn't meet for several years. But when we met again a couple of years ago, he didn't have it anymore. Cal remembers the dream to this day too. To this day, I don't say the name. It's like I summoned the spirit or ghost or whatever it was. Weird stuff happened at that house, and I believe a lot was related to this spirit. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. Me and my fiancé just bought a house and moved in recently, only two months ago. My fiancé is sensitive to paranormal activities and sees spirits on the regular, but never anything with ill intention. So when we moved in here, she always spoke about seeing an older man in the corner, and as well as my son, who sees something and will yell, No, 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 go away. Since moving in, we've had nothing but bad luck, and plants can't even stay alive in the house as well. Things go missing randomly, and then we'll find them in the weirdest places. We've jokingly spoken out loud, say that they're not welcome here, and demanding that they leave and leave us alone. But it hasn't been successful yet. Seems to favour my fiancé over me. Also, my mother-in-law has been staying with us, and she's known to dabble in and with spirits and the paranormal. Her my fiancé, she states that her mom has messed with portals and speaks to the other side, in an unsafe manner. And our fear is that she has an attachment to her which is causing our issues. This may be just in my head, but our relationship has never had issues before until we started moving in and lived together prior to moving into this house. So it wasn't a culture shock as many would say. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. So I was about eight years old and we made our annual trip back to the Philippines. My mother's siblings at the time lived in a village at the base of some small mountains in the Nueva Ecija. I was hanging out with my uncle, about three or four hundred metres down from my aunt's house, where we were staying. Next to that house, he was building as a small banana plantation. Anyways, I was really busting to poop. My uncle was putting the thatching for an awning at the time, and I didn't want to bother, and I really wouldn't have been able to hold it on the walk back. Seemed like a much further walk when I was smaller. I snuck some toilet paper and dug a deep hole at the base of one of those banana trees. Buried the lot when I was done. Man, I was desperate. Within the hour, I was back at my aunt's place. I began to feel weak. Large, pimply things started appearing all over my legs. They didn't hurt to pop, but when they did, it was like a mix that felt about 10% oil and 90% water. They were all over my legs. I couldn't walk. I didn't feel nauseous or anything, but it was extremely hard to walk. Wearing sandals helped somehow, so with the support of my mom and my aunt, they walked me to some older lady's place. Not sure if she was a doctor or just some equivalent of a wise woman. She handed me a glass of water, then cracked an egg open and dropped the contents into the water, and then told me to drink it to about halfway. I drank it about halfway, and she put the glass on the table. We watched as the yolk began to take shape very much like a small tree. Like the yolk spread out, one large stem then sprouting out towards the top of the water. Now chances are, if anyone did it right now, it might achieve the same effect. And banana trees look different to regular trees, but holy cow, it really looked like a young tree. About as young as the banana trees. She asked me if I peed on a tree earlier or even hit one. Told her I did, so she told me to go back and sincerely apologise to the duende residing within. Duende is a mythical creature in the Philippines. Some might describe it as a dwarf, an elf, or just a spirit that lives inside trees or termite mounds. They keep to themselves, but if you mess with them, whether it be deliberately or accidentally, they would curse you to some degree. They took me to that tree to apologise, and very quickly soon after, my weak legs were fine again and the pimply things disappeared within the hour. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. When I was six or seven, we were renting a house. The landlord hired a team of landscapers to trim down a tree in our backyard and to square off the hedges along our back fence. 
Shortly after they started, one of them got scared and kept repeating, Danger. Much danger in Spanish. They cut down a few limbs from the tree, and one of the others grabbed a circular saw to cut the limbs into pieces. He plugged the saw into the outlet, and not only did it turn on, it chased the entire crew, one after another, turning to rush towards the next guy as each one sprinted to either side of the house. The, the saw even made wide turns to chase them. They never came back, and one of their family members stopped by a few days later. Now, it might be a coincidence that the saw had a short in the wiring, and it only looked like it was chasing them, but the next part is what gets me. About a month later, my mom started a fire in the fireplace, using the wood from the trimmed tree and I started a fire. Moments later, there's a large crack and a small but intense burst of flames. That's when the front door slammed open and these shadowy figures sprinted out. They looked human shaped, but their proportions were too long and too thin. Their faces had no features. It was as if your shadow at 5pm just started running off on its own. Mom closed and relocked the door, grabbed me, and we stayed in her bedroom that night. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I was in the front room playing video games at around midnight. I also have headphones on, so I've got my full attention on the game. I remember hearing crying out of nowhere and thought it was my mom, because my parents had been arguing a couple of hours before. I barely heard crying over the murders being committed on GTA that night, but that's besides the point. I took my headphones off and noticed the crying wasn't coming from my mom but the window behind me. The window had blinds over it, so no one could see inside it, but the window was open. I kind of slowly got out of my gaming chair and slithered over to the window, and I opened the blinds to be met by a very nasty lady. She had dirt and mud all over her. She was missing teeth and her eyes were piercing, like if there was no light. I could see every detail in her eyeball, almost as if they were glowing. I kind of stuttered out the words, what's wrong? And she stopped crying and just stared into my eyes and started swinging her hand while looking back. She definitely had a knife and screaming. I yelled for my dad as loud and as much as I could. This didn't faze her. Now in the front room, we have a gun cabinet and I grabbed the first gun I could, which happened to be a hunting rifle. My dad had grabbed his pistol and came into the front room in his underwear and he was very confused. But before he could ask what's wrong, I pointed at the window to the still screaming lady. Mom was hiding in the bedroom and called the police, and the lady was just screaming, but at this point, her vocal cords had been screeching. I had my rifle pointed at her, and Dad had his gun pointed at her. She started cutting the window screen open to get in. I kept telling her to stop and leave and go home, and she didn't. I don't want to talk about the aftermath. The police came and took a statement, and luckily this whole thing was caught on camera from the neighbours across the street. It's not so paranormal, but I still don't know where the lady came from or what her problem was. Dad thinks she was on some kind of drug. I still pray to God to ask for forgiveness. There isn't a day that goes by where I don't hate myself. Stay safe, everyone. You are listening to the content of Paranormal. I grew up in rural America, middle of nowhere, surrounded by woods, no neighbours for a mile in any direction. I like to wander the woods and play with my imagination, with my collection of swords. My dad would play with me and my friends if we ever killed a venomous snake while out and about. So sometimes we'd go snake hunting, although we never found much. Maybe like three or four copperheads over the years that this practice took place. We were mostly just dicking around, and any snakes we found were incidental. Anyway, my friend and I once went out for a late night snake hunt around midnight. We got to the edges of my family's property and dove into some heretofore unexplored woods. Needless to say, we got a little lost, but with our flashlights, swords, and teenage hubris, we weren't at all scared. We were just having a good time. While trying to orient ourselves in these dark woods, we heard a knocking like something solid smacking a tree, wood being knocked over. But it wasn't sporadic. 
like a bug or hog smacking its antlers or tusks on a tree. It wasn't random, like trees being blown about by the wind and knocking into each other. It was a very deliberate and evenly spaced rhythm. Knock, 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 knock. And it was loud, intentional. My friend and I looked at each other with our flashlights and simply said to each other, run, and hauled ass in the opposite direction of the noise. We made it to the nearest road in maybe five minutes of frantic running, bleeding from thorn vines and out of breath. The knocking didn't follow, although we had heard its continuation when we started running until we got too far away. We went back during the day and scoped out that portion of the woods with the sun on our side. We never found any evidence of human habitation, never figured out what could have possibly made the noise. We didn't go near those woods at night anymore. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I live in South Louisiana. There's a place where I grew up called Creighton Point Plantation. It's notoriously haunted. You can Google it. Allegedly used as a Civil War hospital, the front doors being used as stretchers, and rumours of there being something that went down there involving notorious pirate Jean Lafitte. Bunch of history. People have seen all kinds of crazy shit there. When we were about 16, me and my friends regularly used to spend Saturday nights drinking lots of beer and driving around the dirt roads surrounding the plantation ghost hunting meaning getting wasted, listening to lots of rap music, chain smoking, and occasionally stopping and rolling down the windows to see if we could see anything weird. Well, one time, we actually did, surprisingly. We stopped on the main road in front of the plantation. It's in the middle of nowhere. Nothing around but sugarcane fields, dirt roads, and the occasional trailer home. We get out of the truck and turn off all the lights and start looking, just kind of looking around. One of my two friends says he thinks he sees something and starts kind of freaking out, telling us to come see. We look in the direction he's pointing and to the side of the main house. There are some little cabins which I believe to be old slave quarters. I see something weird out in front of one of them. It looks like a woman, down on her knees. We're immediately like, what the fuck is this woman doing kneeling down in a yard at midnight? I ran and got some binoculars out of the truck and sure enough it was a woman. She very slowly stood up and began walking across the yard towards the house, very slowly and gently, as if she didn't have a care in the world. Her arms were just kind of dancing along by her sides and she just crept towards the house. It was then that I noticed that extremely faintly, she seemed to be kind of glowing. It was extremely odd because it wasn't a full moon or anything and nothing around her was glowing. Only her, the whole time she walked. She looked almost as if she was composed of dim moonlight. And then I realized I could make out the shape of the trees on the other side of her. She was very faintly translucent. I gave my friends the binoculars to see if I was just drunk or having a mental break or something. And they immediately confirmed that I was not. We sat there and watched her for maybe four minutes, which felt like an eternity. The longer we watched, the more the reality of what we were seeing began to set in and an intense, indescribable fear started to overtake me. I thought I was the only one, but upon inspection, my friends were visibly shaken as well. It wasn't funny anymore. Just as we really began to freak out, in the distance, we heard gravel crumbling and saw headlights about an eighth of a mile down the road. And the second we did, without the light shining towards us or the girl, she simply dimmed out. It was like someone turned off a light. She just faded away. We all fucking freaked out and got out of there. I don't really believe in God or an afterlife or anything like that. That sure as fuck made and continues to make me question things. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I currently work at a school that might be haunted. There's an old auditorium that we use for plays, musicals, and sometimes for pet rallies. It's creepy as hell when you're alone in it though, so a lot of staff say that's where the ghost lives. I used to teach in the room across the hall from it. My first month there, my lights kept getting shut off. The light switch was right by the door, so I thought it was a student. It kept happening during my plan period, and I asked the teacher next to me to tell his class to stop messing with my room. 
He shut the door one day and it happened. No one was in the halls and I was sitting across the room. My light just turned off on its own. A few days after that, I was testing a website on my projector during my plan. My projector moved on its own. I don't mean it slid down, it moved up and down, then left and right. There was no room above mine, so it wasn't something in the ceiling. I wasn't really freaked out at this point, just annoyed, so I yelled at whatever it was to stop messing with my stuff. The projector stopped moving, and my lights never turned off again. The last time something happened to me, I was in the auditorium itself. We were having a sort of field day thing and were using the auditorium as a movie theatre. I was the one running it. I sat in the back to keep an eye on the kids. I heard someone whisper my name, but like a stage whisper where it's actually pretty loud. No one was behind me. A student close by told me she heard it too, but we both shrugged and kept watching into the Spider-Verse. A few other staff have more interesting stories since they worked there longer. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. I've been having these experiences for over two years now. It started sometime before I got married. It happens once in a while. It happens when I sleep, right when I'm about to just go to deep sleep. When it happens, I would hear a loud bang, a clank, a shriek, or a scream. Sometimes it sounds far away. Sometimes it sounds like it's right beside my ear. It wakes me up, and I end up rushing into a dark house or apartment, thinking someone just broke in. I'm a skeptic of the paranormal. I've been chalking this experience up to audio hallucinations, but that doesn't make it any less weird or creepy. To clarify, I'm not on any medication, I don't drink alcohol, and I don't take recreational drugs. I use my brain a lot at work, so I have to be at capacity all day every day. The most disturbing experience I had was when I got woken up by a long, high-pitched scream that sounded like it was coming from a woman in our kitchen and living room on the second floor. At the time, I was alone in the house because my wife worked the night shift. I quickly ran down the dark staircase to the living room to check it out, but no one was there. I checked the first floor entrance to see if someone had broken in. Locked. I checked the garage door. Locked. I checked the balcony door. I checked the windows, all locked. Me being tired and sleepy quickly dismissed this as me just being tired and sleepy. So I went back to bed. A couple more of these would happen, like a loud bang or a loud clunk coming from the second floor that would wake me up. But I would chalk these off as just me being tired and would immediately go back to sleep. I wouldn't recall these until they kept happening. I told my wife and brother about these experiences. We all agreed it was creepy, but maybe it's just my brain playing games with me. We're now renting our house to someone else. We moved to an apartment closer to my work to save on transit costs. I still get these experiences, but not as disturbing as the screaming woman. Sometimes I get woken by what sounds like someone crashed through our apartment door, or trays and pans in our kitchen being thrown out. But when I check them out, it's just our normal, unbroken in dark apartment. Now, I say these are audio hallucinations because I had a dream when I was a kid and it was a woman with her gaunt face and distorted voice screaming at the top of her lungs. As a kid, it was extremely frightening. So I tried waking up and as I woke up, the voice started to warp to this melodious tune. It was the voice of a singing woman coming from the radio. When I was a kid, I liked listening to the radio to help me sleep, especially the jazz radio stations. I was hearing a distorted version of a song on the radio as I tried to go to sleep. But it's hard to make an equivalence of this past experience to my experiences now, because then I knew what the source is, the radio. This time, I just don't know. You are listening to the content of Paranormal.com. 